Hello and welcome to our new campaign Clothes with the Conscience. Now ever since I've started working on this campaign, I've been inspired to take a look at my own wardrobe for clothes that I don't wear anymore, the clothes that don't fit, or the ones that I haven't even worn once. But don't we all have clothes like that? From last season's new look to the top we thought we'd fit into, but never did. Clothes are so affordable these days. So I'm going to declutter today and see how much clothing I can get rid of. Wow, that is a huge pile of clothes and just from one person. Now imagine how many more clothes will come out if every member of my family declutters their closet and how many more if my entire neighborhood gets rid of the clothing they don't wear. But have you ever wondered where all these unused clothes and all these discarded clothes go to? To the landfill. According to reports by 2050, India will need a landfill as big as New Delhi. We throw away 1 million tons of textile every year in India. But there is a way to stop the textile waste from choking our environment. Clothes with a conscience. While I go get that done for my pile of clothes, here are our hosts for today's show. Thanks Varnika for that food for thought. Uh, hello everybody. I'm Sarah Jacob. Namaskar, I'm Tabish Hussain. Did you know that the fashion industry is one of the top 5 polluting industries in the world? The global fashion industry is the second biggest consumer of water. Greenhouse gas emissions by the global textile industry are greater than those from shipping and international air travel combined. सिर्फ भारत में ही टेक्सटाइल से 10 लाख टन वेस्ट पैदा होता है वैश्विक स्तर पर बनने वाले कपड़ों में से सिर्फ 10 प्रतिशत ही दोबारा इस्तेमाल हो पाते हैं और बाकी लैंडफिल में जो है वेस्ट के तौर पर चला जाता है जिससे कचरे के ढेर बढ़ते जा रहे हैं और इसका जो असर है वो वातावरण पर पड़ रहा है जलवायु परिवर्तन पर पड़ रहा है और बड़े स्तर पर पानी का भी कपड़े बनाने में इस्तेमाल होता है सो वेलकम to clothes with a conscience a campaign by Usha and NDTV to encourage and educate people on the need for sustainable fashion and repurposing let's before we move on let's check back with varnika to see where she's got with her pile of clothes So after decluttering I brought all my clothes here at Use Me Works. This place is run by Minakshi Sharma who's into upcycling old clothes. Let's talk to her. Hi Minakshi. Main aap ek bahut sare kapde layi hu. Isme se bahut sare kapde aise jisme se tag bhi nahi utra hua. Aur kai kai kapde jo maine ek baar hi pehne hain. To ab aap mujhe batao ki ab in kapdon mein se kya ban sakta hai? Okay that's great Varnika I'm so happy that you want to upcycle your old clothes you'd be surprised to know that there is so much stuff that we can make out of your clothes there are masks bags accessories dream catchers decorations planters basket and so much more that you can't think of So why Minakshi says is more of my clothes We go back to the studio, and by the end of this hour, we'll show you at least one creation come out of this pile of clothes. Let's see what it will be. So, Minakshi, our team, with us, is in our studio. They will tell us how much you can make with your clothes. They will recycle them and use them for better use. Minakshi, we will go on with this show and see what they make with their clothes. But first, let's see what they make with their clothes. But first, let's see what they make with their clothes. But first, let's see what they make with their clothes. फास्ट फैशन क्या है जिसको लेकर हम इस शो में बात करेंगे जो आप कपड़े पहनते हैं जो फैशन आप देखते हैं हर रोज़ बदलता है बदलते वक्त के साथ तेज़ी से फैशन बदल रहा है और बहुत कम वक्त में बदलते ट्रेंड जो हैं वो क्यों फिक्र पैदा कर रहे हैं और क्यों स्लो और सस्टेनेबल फैशन की बात करना यहाँ पर ज़रूरी हो गया है इस रिपोर्ट में आप देखिए You see your favorite celebrity wear something cool or you see a trendy catwalk style you love. You got to have it before you have time to change your mind. Someone has mass produced and released it in a store at a really cheap rate while it's still hot property. But oh god the next day something even cooler comes along. Get rid of all of these clothes and get the new ones in fast. Fast fashion can be defined as low cost trendy clothing that samples ideas from the celebrity culture. The idea is to get the newest styles in the market as fast as possible. so shoppers can buy them while the trend is still popular fast fashion plays into the idea that repeating outfits is a fashion faux pas 
Sadly, people discard the clothing once it goes out of style, which is very quickly, and all the discarded clothes end up in a landfill. Fast fashion leads to overproduction and consumption, making the fashion industry one of the world's largest contributors to pollution. So what is the fashion industry as a whole doing about environmental damages of fast fashion? Is it even possible to address issues around fast fashion in a country like India? Joining us now, we have Ashish Chaturvedi, head of uh, the Environment and Energy and Resilience, UNDP in India. Jaspreet uh, Chandok, uh, vice president and head of fashion at Rise Worldwide. And Rila Dhaka needs no introduction, fashion designer uh, of uh, India. Ashish Chaturvedi, to you first. Um, um, We've, we've seen, we've just seen what fast fashion is. Tell us again what the environmental impact of fast fashion is and why should this concern all of us? Thanks. Uh, thanks for having me on the show. Uh, you're, well, of course, your visuals uh, were quite revealing. Uh, you're quite right in pointing out uh, that the statistics are very staggering. Uh, and the enormity of the situation can be gauged uh, from the fact that every second the equivalent of one garbage truck full of clothes is burned or dumped in landfills. Uh, textile dyeing is world's second largest polluter of water. Uh, so we are actually talking about these intersecting environmental crises that we are facing of climate change, of biodiversity loss and pollution. And uh, textiles actually contribute to, uh, well, are a big evil in for all of these three uh, sort of uh, problems that we are facing right now. Uh, the fashion industry actually produces 10% of all humanity's carbon emissions, and it's the second largest consumer of world's water supply. Uh, when you think about the oceans, 35% of the microplastics, these teeny weeny bits of plastics which are entering into our uh, food supply chain, uh, the oceans, uh, but 35% of those microplastics come from the textile industry, especially the laundering of uh, synthetic textiles like polyester. And uh, estimates suggest that if we continue on the current trajectory, business as usual, uh, the carbon budget of the textile industry would jump to 26%. Just imagine it's almost one fourth would come from the textile industry by 2050. So we're really talking about a very complex global and multi-tiered industry, which is creating massive number of jobs as well. So it's not only about the sort of the, the negatives, sure. we really have to think about the sort of possibilities of engaging people uh, in service to the environment as well, not only thinking, and you have some people sitting in the panel as well, we're going to talk about that. But I think mm -hmm. we have to really find the right balance and business as usual, fast fashion as it is running right now can't really continue. रीना जी इस इसी पॉइंट पर मैं आपके पास आना चाहूँगा आपका एक लंबा तजुर्बा रहा है बतौर डिज़ाइनर और आपने देखा है कैसे ये इंडस्ट्री बदली है इतने वक्त में लेकिन अभी की अगर आप यहाँ पर ये ज़रूरत देखें जो स्लो फैशन और सस्टेनेबल फैशन की बात की जा रही है ये कितना ज़रूरी आपको लगता है और भारत के अगर हम नज़रिए से देखें तो आपको कितना आसान लगता है ये बात लोगों तक पहुँचा पाना क्या लोग इसको आसानी से एक्सेप्ट कर पाएंगे एक्चुअल में मेहरा मेरे लिए ये एक टॉपिक है जो मैंने पिछले 10-15 साल से हर इंडियन पॉलिटिशियन जिसको मैंने कभी एनकाउंटर करा है मैंने उनको रिक्वेस्ट करी है कि ये गाजीपुर में जो ये पहाड़ बन गए हैं कपड़ों के और उसके कारण वहाँ जो स्लज और सुएज और हालात हैं उनकी तरफ हमें एक्ट करना चाहिए एनी anyway, Uh, मेरा कोई इफेक्ट नहीं हुआ पर मेरे लिए ये एक बहुत ही सिग्निफिकेंट जरूरत है इस टाइम की और इलाज मैं नहीं जानती अकेले में आई एम श्योर आप लोग विल हैव द एक्सपर्टीज एंड समबडी इन इंडिया वी हैव सो मेनी टैलेंटेड पीपल वी कैन पुट अ थिंक टैंक कि उसका हम क्या सोल्यूशन बनाएं जो एग्जिस्टिंग है और गोइंग अड इन फ्यूचर मेरे कारण एक बहुत जरूरी रिक्वायरमेंट है कि प्लास्टिक जो इसमें हम कपड़े एक्सपोर्ट्स के पैक करते हैं एन एक्सपोर्टर गेट्स वेरी टाइट शिपमेंट्स फिर वो आगे फैब्रिकेटर को देता है और उसके आगे वो कई बार सब फैब्रिकेटर्स को जाते हैं सो विच मीन एंड रिजल्ट में वो उसके पास इतना ट्रिकल डाउन कम कैश इन हैंड है कि वो कुछ रिप्लेसमेंट जो है वो बहुत एक्सपेंसिव है फिर वेट बढ़ जाता है यानी कि कागो का कॉस्ट बढ़ जाएगा बोथ बायर का या हमारा सो वन ऑफ द फर्स्ट एसेंशियल इज टू फाइंड अ रिप्लेसमेंट टू प्लास्टिक विच इज अफोर्डेबल which is also price sensitive right accessible and is also uh, you know accepted with the storm uh, you know there's their standards they accept 
by buyers all the uh, all over the world and uska jo uh, shipping ka vajan hai wo bhi kam ho dusra jo designers patterns pe chalte hain pattern mark hote hain to cutting mein jaise koi banyan banao ya kuch ho to unko wastage jisko bolte hain jo ja kar ke phenka jata hai jaise jo katran aap bata rahe the sir abhi uh, rose itni waste hoti hain wo hum kaise reuse kare usko जिसको रद्दी वाले में जाए या झाड़ू में जाता है या कचरे में जाता है को तो वो डिजाइन एक बने जो आई फील उससे बहुत बहुत बड़ा फर्क पड़ेगा ऑफ यूजिंग सेल्वेजेस वेस्टेजेस और टू क्रिएट पैटर्न्स इन अ वे दैट इवन आउट ऑफ द लेफ्ट ओवर एरिया अ पर्सन विल मेक समथिंग विच बिकम्स अ पार्ट ऑफ द कलेक्शन दूसरा ऑफकोर्स एज दे आर नाउ डिजाइनर्स हुआ मेकिंग री फैशन और इट्स बिकम अ टर्म री फैशन का मतलब वो पुराने कपड़ों को आप फिर से ही फैशन करके पहन सकते हो एंड जैसे पुराने जमाने में हमारे पैचवर्क की रजाइयाँ बनती थी सो डोंट थ्रो अवे योर क्लोथ टाई टू यू री यूज दैम एज क्राफ्ट और इंटरेस्टिंग आइडियाज बट द बिगेस्ट क्राइसिस इज इन माई आइज इज ऑफ द सेल्वेज फ्रॉम द क्लोदिंग एंड द फैशन इंडस्ट्री विच इज गोइंग एवरी डे एज वेस्टेज एंड हाउ वी कैन यूज दैट एंड ऑफकोर्स द यूज ऑफ एंड टू गेट अ करेक्ट Uh, affordable easily accessible all right. alternative to plastic all right well good to have that inside uh, you know reality check from what actually happens thanks so much but uh, just preet uh, chandok uh, vice president and head of fashion at rise worldwide india isn't just a global hub for manufacturing of fast fashion we have our own fashion demand that has grown exponentially is sustainable fashion and this leads one to ask why should one embrace sustainable fashion can it also be a sustainable business no absolutely so in fact uh, the work that rise does uh, in the country is uh, run the lakme fashion week in partnership with the fashion design council of india as well and we also run a lot of sustainable ips in the country uh, so we actually award the la- we have the largest award for sustainable fashion in the country called circular design challenge um so one of the things that we've realized because we've been working with a lot of stakeholders in india and across the world so we work with the undp uh you know in partnership with them we work with retailers across the chain so we'll work with anaditya billa group reliance industries and one of the things that we've realized is that organizations are putting in a lot more focus towards sustainable practices and that's coming through commitments that they are making um in media as well we have a partnership called shore which is sustainable resolution where 16 of the largest manufacturers of fast fashion or you know premium fashion in the country have come together with the ministry of textiles and the united nations to actually make a pledge to become significantly sustainable by 2025 so that is from the producer level but there is also the consumer level because the producer can keep producing but consumer has also uh, to also accept uh, all of that so there is a lot of work that we do in terms of driving consumer narratives around sustainability that it is cool it is what is relevant today it is it is for the future so let's like, say the t-shirt that i'm wearing right now mm. uh, just for your reference i'm just going to go down a little okay is actually made from uh, pet bottles that we collected at lakme fashion week uh we then converted it into fibers and then we had uh, which which is which was done by arlan and then we actually had satyapal and rajesh pratap singh design a limited edition t-shirt out of that we sent out sent it out to all the influencers and stakeholders in the industry and you know we we are actually working towards fashion week becoming a carbon neutral event we will be the first in the country. all these narratives that we drive makes a significant amount of difference then we also have the fiber mm-hmm. side of things because the input into the product when the producer gets it also has to be sustainable correct so we are actually driving all polyester usage in the country to be recycled polyester through rlan fantastic we've actually created mm-hmm. a silk substitute because there is also you know let's say animal and you know a usage of animal products that we look at uh with with tensel lux which is a global company so a lot of work is being done in terms of finding sustainable fibers that can then enter into the products 
इसको लेकर क्योंकि इस इंडस्ट्री में सबकी अपनी अपनी ज़रूरतें होती हैं अगर आप देखें कपड़ों को लेकर भी सबके लिए एक साइज़ नहीं होता है ऐसे में आपको क्या लगता है कि किस लेवल के बदलाव की ज़रूरत है प्रोडक्शन प्रोसेस को और ज़्यादा सस्टेनेबल बनाने के लिए और आपको लगता है कि जो बड़े मैन्युफैक्चरर्स हैं वो इसमें की रोल प्ले कर सकते हैं जो छोटे लेवल पर जो प्रोड्यूसर्स हैं मैनुफैक्चरर्स हैं उनके मुकाबले आई थिंक दोनों साइड को काम करना पड़ेगा क्योंकि ये दिस इज अ प्रॉब्लम दैट एक्सटेंड्स अक्रॉस द इंडस्ट्री सो हमने जो देखा है कि ओवर द लास्ट फाइव सेवन इयर्स एंड यू नो वी वर्क विद ऑल द फैशन डिजाइनर्स इन द कंट्री कि जो स्मॉल लेवल मैन्युफैक्चरर्स हैं ओके एंड एटलीस्ट एट द प्रीमियम लेवल अ लॉट ऑफ वर्क इज बींग डन इन टर्म्स ऑफ क्रिएटिंग सस्टेनेबल प्रैक्टिस बोथ फ्रॉम अ पीपल परस्पेक्टिव एंड फ्रॉम अ वेस्ट मैनेजमेंट अ डाइंग प्रोसेस you know using hand indian handcraft perspective uh on on the larger level though will be larger environmental impact so you know let's say if you were to look at the 16 manufacturers and brands that signed up with us for sure okay their total turnover in the year is 40000 crores just out of india so that's 40000 crores worth of consumption that if we can move towards sustainable fibers sustainable uh, you know actions and manufacturing processes that's where the big impact will actually come in and you know i i think we also need to keep in mind that sustainability in india is unique unlike the world where it is only around the environment this is also about people and practices and our you know uh, hand textiles and i think there's a lot of work that brings in sustainability through ensuring that jo hamari textile techniques hai जो हैंड वोवन है वो भी यू नो कंटिन्यूस टू ग्रो इन द कंट्री सो वी आर इन अ यूनिक पोजिशन आई एम एक्चुअली इन लंडन राइट नाउ आई वॉज हैविंग अ कॉन्वर्सेशन विद द लंडन फैशन वीक यर यू नो टू सी हाउ वी कैन क्रिएट ग्रेटर नैरेटिव एंड ग्लोबली यू नो द बिगेस्ट कॉन्वर्सेशन राइट नाउ इज टू वर्ड सस्टेनेबिलिटी एंड हाउ वी कैन क्रिएट सस्टेनेबल लिंकेजेस इन बेस्ट प्रैक्टिस यर इन द यू के एंड इन इंडिया सो यू नो लॉट ऑफ अ लॉट ऑफ वर्क अक्रॉस द चेन आई थिंक करना पड़ेगा और अ लॉट ऑफ वर्क इज है but it is the aggregation that will make the true impact yeah तो एक बड़े लेवल पर काम करने की सरा यहाँ पर जरूरत है आशीष जी आपके पास मैं यहाँ पर आता हूँ एक जो बड़े स्तर पर वेस्ट की समस्या है वो भी एक बड़ी चिंता है यू एन डी पी इंडिया किस तरीके से फैशन इंडस्ट्री और टेक्सटाइल इंडस्ट्री के साथ काम कर रही है सस्टेनेबल रिसोर्सेज प्रोसेस को बढ़ाने की इसके जरिए इस वेस्ट को या जीरो वेस्ट के टारगेट को अचीव करने के लिए हाँ आई थिंक हमें थोड़ा एक ब्रॉडर परस्पेक्टिव से भी इस चीज को देखना पड़ेगा एक कॉन्टेक्स्ट द कॉन्टेक्स्ट इज मच ब्रॉडर इट्स अबाउट लाइफ स्टाइल्स फॉर एनवायरमेंट आई आई एम अज्यूमिंग सम ऑफ यू वुड हैव हर्ड अबाउट इट द प्राइम मिनिस्टर मेड दिस अनाउंसमेंट एट द कॉप इन ग्लासगो लास्ट ईयर अबाउट इंडिया इज मूव टूवर्ड्स लाइफ स्टाइल्स प्रोमोटिंग लाइफ स्टाइल्स फॉर एनवायरमेंट एंड यू एन डी पी इज वर्किंग वेरी क्लोजली विद द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया विद द नीति आयोग एंड विद द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ एनवायरमेंट फॉरेस्ट एंड क्लाइमेट चेंज on promoting this broader narrative of lifestyles for environment which thinks about sort of promoting sustainable consumption practices of course fa- fashion is one big element of it but i think we need to have a broader conversation on sustainable lifestyles in general uh specifically on textiles we are working very closely so mr chandok already mentioned us uh, so un has a broader global sustainable fashion alliance the un agencies come together and because it's such an important industry it's so relevant for the environment the climate and biodiversity the un agencies formed a global alliance and we work very closely with businesses all over the world including in india but we also work very closely with communities uh, so i just came back from ladakh uh, and we are working there with local artisans uh, who are working on pashmina but on all other kinds of fibers as well we are working on metal fiber in sikkim we are working with herders who are trying to do some kind of artisanal work with wool Mm-hmm. in uttarakhand as well as in other parts of the country All as well right. and i think we need to take a la- broader sort of systemic view when right. we think about lifestyles in general but we also look at sort of fostering these sustainable practices Both because the i think the traditional the values level. are really important as well correct uh, reena raka talking about global and at the local level you've been speaking over the years consistently about sustainable fashion thoughtful fashion being the only way forward uh, as a as a designer and as a fashion house but what about consumers how can consumers be thoughtful about their uh, their decisions so one of them as you see is the simpler ways are refashion the even easier thing is to rewear your clothes i also feel not to wash you know the clothes so much 
because that also pollutes the environment and uh, even activities frankly even ironing because wrinkle free now we have these options because it's not just that in organic fab fibers there is also in the unorganic sector as uh, um, just preet ji uh, pointed out wherein the polyesters are being recycled because india as you know is a large polyester wearing uh, country and a it's affordable and to its light it doesn't crease so not every man can afford it but yes in the upper levels of society who they become the influencers for them a to go into our own uh, systems you know there is so much promotion and talk about khadi because frankly what it does is khadi consumes less water it is a bit coarser it does have discrepancies it may not go into a perfect white uh, but it is a fabric which is completely organic it's sustainable so there is a lot of um, let's say propaganda a desire from designers from the government from the back end to come out and start using indigenous fabrics like khadi like we did in the past and of course to recycle to rewear to give away to whatever patchwork it's the best trend i feel in the world because right now it is trending but of course designers are innovative they're weaving the patches they're also creating prints out of it but ideally patchwork is the best way to recycle your leftover side wings and the clothing we can use it as bags as accessories like maybe the designer who you have given the mission or the task to will come up with but uh, going forward i think sustainable in clothing we need to make simple simple step changes i just think just rewear your clothes you don't have to hoard so much you can uh, recycle rearrange the trends or refashion it and uh, be conscious of what you're buying now you know look at the tags because Thank where you. do they come from Thank you all for joining us. Uh, you know, for all of your work in this field over the years, over the decades, but also helping us create some awareness today. We really appreciate uh, uh, your time. So, bigger fashion houses, brands, and designers—they're working on green strategies. But how do we get this down to the level of street fashion? Uh, street fashion in a country like India. What is the potential for slow, sustainable fashion? A uh, fashion, and can we find solutions that are better? for people and the planet we have priyanka khanna head of international expansion at fashion for good joining us uh, we have mayura davda shah founder and creative director at uh, mayu and we have professor dr vinaya bhushan jena of uh, nift bhuvneshwar she's also the chairman of the textile association of uh, india the odisha unit priyanka uh, priyanka khanna to you first Tell us about uh, fashion for good and uh, what is it? What does it do? And what has your experience been like uh, engaging with Indian brands? Thank you. Um, fashion for good basically is a global platform. Um, the purpose of fashion for good is to scale technology innovation in the fashion industry to make the fashion industry more sustainable. The broader level going goal being bring the industry from these traditional methods to more modern advanced methods to so reduce the overall carbon emissions that the industry creates what we are a five year old initiative we are based out of the netherlands but it's a global initiative working with the industry across the board and we spent the last 3 years in asia in 3 years i think particularly based out of india we've engaged with almost all of the indian industry talking about manufacturers brands and technology innovation and i think it's quite fantastic to see that um india is is this absolutely amazing market which is uh, uniquely positioned it's not just a production market it does have over 15000 manufacturers producing for brands across the world but it's also producing for domestic consumption it's a consumption a huge consumption market with 1.3 plus billion people who are now starting to get even with the with the growth happening they are starting to become bigger and bigger consumers for the world in general so india seems to have be sitting in this amazing point where the, it has the opportunity to adopt very quickly and change very quickly into more sustainable practices hmm. and then become a circular sourcing or a more sustainable sourcing region for the world because it is a very important market for the world production market but also mm -hmm. educate and start changing and building newer practices within the country so our experience in general with the industry mm -hmm. i think there is a lot more advancement that you see with the bigger brands as you mm -hmm. said in your session also but when you talk about indian industry i think 
it is still learning. It's still at a nascent stage to understand what sustainability means, what carbon emissions are. We yeah. see very, very pioneering uh, uh, brands and manufacturers who are actually taking huge commitments and making big opportunities or let's say changes in the supply chain at the moment. But Indian market challenges sustainable बनाया जा सकता है फैशन को और आपका जो ब्रांड है वो सस्टेनेबल लग्जरी के लिए जाना जाता है किस तरीके के मटीरियल आप इस्तेमाल करते हैं उसके बारे में बताइए और क्या जरूरत है आप समझते हैं इसके लिए श्योर थैंक यू सो मच सो मायू जो हमारा ब्रांड है वो इसी प्रेमिस पे बनाया गया है कि वी ऑफर फैशन प्रीमियम फैशन लग्जरी फैशन बट इन अ वेरी सस्टेनेबल मैनर एज सस्टेनेबल एज वी कैन मेक इट विद द यूज ऑफ इनोवेटिव ऑल्टरनेटिव मटीरियल्स जैसे कि हमने शुरुआत की फिश uh, लेदर से uh, हालांकि ये एनिमल ओरिजिन से आता है फिश से बना बनाया जाता है दिस इज एक्चुअली अ बाय प्रोडक्ट ऑफ द फिश प्रोसेसिंग इंडस्ट्री एंड अगर आप इसका प्रोसेस देखेंगे राइट फ्रॉम द सोर्स टिल द एंड ये रिलेटिवली काफी ज्यादा सस्टेनेबल है अगर आप इसका इम्पैक्ट देखोगे एनवायरमेंट पे um, तो हमने शुरुआत की फिश लेदर से जैसे दिस इज साम लेदर दिस इज वन ऑफ आर प्रोडक्ट्स एंड दिस इज वुल फिश लेदर ये हम आइसलैंड और जर्मनी से इंपोर्ट uh, करते हैं एंड um, उसके बाद हमने शुरू किया वीगन फैशन की तरफ देखना वेरी सीरियसली सो देन वी स्टार्टेड विथ पिनिया टेक्स जो कि पाइन के uh, पौधे से एज एन उनके पत्तों से जो फाइबर्स एक्सट्रैक्ट होते हैं उनसे बनाया जाता है सो दिस इज एन एग्जांपल ऑफ द मटेरियल एंड अभी हम देख रहे हैं टू गो मोर एंड मोर इनटू वीगन मटेरियल्स जो कि सारे प्लांट बेस्ड होंगे एंड एन एक्साइटिंग अपडेट दैट आई एम आई एम हैप्पी टू शेयर टुडे इज दैट वी आर आल्सो लुकिंग एट डेवलपिंग आवर ओन मटेरियल मेड आउट ऑफ फ्रूट बाय प्रोडक्ट व्हिच इज वाइडली अवेलेबल इन इंडिया इन आवर कंट्री All right, we have Chirag uh, Tekchandani, co-founder and CEO of the Bombay Hemp uh, Company, joining us. Thanks, Chirag. Good to have you on uh, on our show. Also, you know, we started off by asking, uh, how is it possible to address fast fashion issues in a country like India? But let me turn that question around and ask you, uh, ask it to you in a different way. What about in a country like India? Does that also not mean equally that we have a potential for slow, sustainable fashion given our size? Of course. Um, thank you so much for having me on the show as well, and uh, pleasure to be amongst uh, a bunch of uh, distinguished individuals that are trying to work in the space and make a difference. Um, uh, at, at our end, actually, we are uh, known as Bombay Hemp Company. Bombay Hemp Company is a perspective that uh, is different, and we've started uh, Bohico with a solution-based approach in the sustainable uh, textile space. we are in india's first industrial hemp and medicinal cannabis company hemp is also colloquially known as um, bhang in our country audyogic bhang and we around 10 years ago started bohico with a mission to educate cultivate and elevate india about the uses and benefits of hemp as a crop so uh, for everyone here and listening Uh, hemp actually dates back to about uh, the use of hemp dates back dates back to early centuries uh, we had the royal navy cleopatra all of them actually draped themselves in hemp uh, which is a fi- fiber that is much stronger than when compared to cotton it's also uh, from an agricultural lens it is the end that bombay hemp company is working towards it's the means of which is hemp because the farmers in our country can actually benefit of growing this crop as well so at a consumer end it is not only a strong fiber uh, that can last you much longer but it is also mm-hmm. got it also cuts uv rays to about 98% as compared to 90 uh, cotton which does it to about 92 it also is something that wears much better so it's a little like wine it ages much well better and and you know when the more you wear it the softer it gets so it washes pretty well um and over and above that uh, it also brings about a uh, 
a benefit to the stakeholders involved in the community, right? Like, for example, our very farmers, the India is an agrarian economy and uh, for the farmers here, they need alternative crops to grow, which mm -hmm. they can benefit from. So a large part of India can actually grow uh, Odhyogik Bhang in every three, it only takes about 100 days to grow. It grows 12 feet tall. So here what I'm trying to say is that sustainable fashion is also about uh, trying to look at it from a different perspective. Do your bit in the country to try and see how you can mitigate yeah. uh, the crisis that we are speaking about on this and bring about systemic change across the value chain, which is um, not only at a farmer level, but also yeah. for the consumer. You start consuming much lesser as a, as a consumer, right? So you farm to fashion concept ke baat karte hain. Uh, uh, Professor Bunaya, main aapke paas aana chahunga yaha par. Uh, ye fa, uh, concept jo hai, ye aapne introduce kiya tha uh, Nift Bhuvneshwar mein, jiske baad aur jaga bhi isko replicate kiya gaya. Iske baare mein thoda sa bataiye humare darshako ko. Ji, dhanne baad. Dekhe, farm to fashion uh, concept jo hai, se basically revolutionary and inclusive concept tha jisko humne handloom ke upar apply karne ka koshish kiya this is the first ever institution in this country and probably in the world where we have tried to integrate the entire eco friendly uh, fashion value chain right from farm to fashion what we have done because we know in handloom we never apply any synthetic fiber we always apply natural fiber and until we discovered the synthetic dyes we used to apply natural dyes uh, source from different plant or mineral sources so we went around uh, different parts of the country and found almost more than 200 varieties of natural dye yielding plants in odisha itself we have got more than 100 different varieties of natural dye yielding plants itself so we got about 10 different uh, natural fiber yielding plants and about 60 different natural dye yielding plants in our campus just to show the students that how you can integrate this into the handloom fashion value chain. Wonderful. So, Professor, so that I, shows how you're ha tackling the problem at the source, right? Making sure you're right. not uh, putting in clean dyes, etc. But what about the end? Because our clothes can take as long as 200 years to decompose. Uh, you, uh, Professor, uh, are also uh, the chairman of the Odisha unit of the Textile Association of India. What can such bodies do, uh, perhaps doing already, to produce less waste, to reuse it, to basically keep it out of landfills in the end? Yes, it's a very interesting question. In fact, we have to keep ourselves away as much as possible from the synthetic fibers. You see, today almost six, more than 65% of all the fibers are from the petrochemical base. And this is the main cause of uh, the blame for this fashion industry, polluting the, the environment in terms of uh, GHG emissions or microplastic pollutions or even the water use. So when we have got... Uh, uh, a wonderful agroclimatic, uh, I mean, wonderful agroclimatic zones. Why can't we produce different types of bast as well as leaf fibers, mm. which can be used in the industry? And uh, India produces almost more than six, uh, ninety-five percent of all handloom produced in the world. We can at least, you know, apply those in the handloom industry to bridge the gap between demand for and supply of sustainable fashion. We are trying to educate as an industry body to the, uh, you know, to go for both uh, responsible production mm. and consumption, trying to educate how they can Correct. bring in sustainability uh, in the industrial practices by using different types of natural fibers, whether it is jute, hemp, or it's linen, or it's about kenaf or seashell or any other fiber. And how do we magnify this? How do we take this to the mainstream? Priyanka Khanna, we asked this question a little while earlier. You have bigger fashion houses, brands, younger designers, they're all working on green strategies. But how do we get this down to the level of street fashion? I think that's an excellent question because um, innovation always ends up happening at the larger scale level or let's say the big brand and manufacturer level. I don't know if there is a clear cut answer that I have for you here. But there are three, four key aspects that matter at the street level. I think one is to reach the, the common ground or let's say every little retailer, a huge role needs to come around the policy side. So policy makers need to get involved. 
And India has some great examples of what has happened in the past. Wastewater in the past in this industry has been a huge issue. And governments have come together, put policies in various regions to reduce this. And that has been applied for all the street level players, so all the smaller manufacturers to bigger manufacturers. And I think similar initiatives now need to come around newer materials, dyeing processes, all the other technology intervention that has been discussed here. Mm. So much more incentives for Boheko, for example, for building newer materials or fish leather, for example, that that role still needs to play by government, which we see happening a lot more at EU level, but not so much yet at India level, uh, including textile waste, which I think is such a massive problem. And there is policy around the imported part, but there isn't much policy around domestic and pre-consumer waste as mm. such. The second key aspect is, I, I believe, consumers. While consumers, I think, feel like they don't play a role enough, but consumers play a huge role. Yeah. If consumer is educated, they're able to ask questions, uh, as mentioned in the previous channel, to understand where their clothes are coming from, who's making their clothes, yeah. what are the different aspects that they need to understand and maybe further educate or push the industry to change. And now I we're think- We're trying the, to do our little bit by doing yeah. shows like this. But Chirag, you know, uh, I, I loved hearing everything you said about hemp and I really want to try and uh, pick up something. I've never tried it, so I'd love to see what it feels like. But let me ask you this one question. Even natural fabrics can be a problem, right? At the scale, fast fashion demands because Cotton, we're told, requires enormous uh, quantities of water, pesticides in developing countries. They, then this leads to droughts and um, other sorts of uh, problems. What, uh, I mean, how do you, I mean, it can't just be this or that. Sometimes even natural products can uh, have, consume a lot of resources. Right. Um, no, you're absolutely right. Um, but um, uh, there are solutions that are available in this country if looked at uh, well, right? So, for example, um, uh, can't help but take it again. For One can actually grow this crop, which is known as bhang or uh, has, has a very um, maligned sort of um, perspective when it comes to the end consumer. But as far as the farmers are concerned, yeah. This is a crop that can grow in alteration or, or there's a lot of crop mm. rotation that takes place in this country as well. In fact, it re-fertiles the soil. So uh, for the benefit of the farmer, uh, if he wants to grow, he or she wants to grow twice a year, uh, natural resources are available for them to take to and in alteration with their steady and mainstay crops actually grow mm. Uh, uh, things because right now it's all wild and feral that's growing in this country, right? Where the heartland of uh, cannabis or hemp, uh, it was all first found here in the Himalayas, and now the the globe has made a multi-dollar, a billion-dollar industry out of, out of it. it. Yeah. So, point being that we have available uh, solutions within the country, it's heartland itself, and uh, we should try and take to those uh, because uh, one thing is for sure that uh, once we scale any natural commodity, that's yeah. when it becomes affordable for the end consumer to take to as well. Um, sustainable and slow fashion are uh, generally uh, fabrics and, and apparel that are priced at much uh, dearer than uh, the conventional fast fashion. But hey, what if you were yeah. told that uh, for every one um, sustainable garment that you purchase and make your decision yeah. much more responsible towards the climate, you will not uh, you will you will have to not purchase all, all those four or five uh, you know eight wash lasting fast fashion clothes right. that you typically uh, pick up from uh, retail. So I think it's right there. It's just that we all have to try and uh, do our bit, and it's not asking for much, right? To just try and try to try to go with ten percent of your wardrobe being sustainable, uh, and that's a little attempt that all of us here can make. Uh, can start to, somewhere. To, Mayura, I want to come to this point. We've seen so many things that we have what are the options, how we can make our clothes and our wardrobe better. What will you do in your day-to-day life to make our wardrobe more sustainable? Yeah, I think uh, to Prabhu's point, there are many options out there. And uh, you know, being mindful as a consumer, you know, being more aware, it starts with educating yourself, asking the right questions, doing your research. I think that's the first step towards adopting a, a, a sustainable lifestyle uh, or having a sustainable wardrobe. Um, I, I think um, one of the things that also matters there is 
putting quality over quantity, right? Uh, we're all attracted by the trends, ever-changing trends um, in the fashion space. But I think a lot is happening in the sustainable fashion uh, scene as well. Uh, a lot of brands are offering, such as, you know, what we do, one of the things that we do is we embrace a seasonless fashion. So we're offering products uh, and designs that would be evergreen and can go from generation to generation. Um, I think um, speaking to that uh, effect, uh, if you can try to say no to fast fashion, um, you know, a little bit at a time. Um, and also if, if budget is your concern, then I think a lot of interesting startups and, and uh, brands are coming up that are offering pre-loved fashion. Um, also, when it comes to occasional wear, right, um, you can, you know, when it comes to women, we only want to wear our lenga ones or, yeah. you know, wear it, uh, you know, as, as less as possible. So then I think there's also this option of um, rentals yeah. these days, uh, which yeah. is quite interesting, right? It has been adopted widely in the US, but we're also seeing that being offered in India now, which is uh, encouraging. Yes, so I are. think... Um, and we'll have some of yes, them joining uh, on our show in a bit. थैंक यू सो मच आप सब लोगों का जुड़ने के लिए हमारे साथ प्रियंका चिराग मयूरा और प्रोफेसर बिनाया यहाँ पर बारह सारा एक छोटे से ब्रेक के लिए रुकेंगे उसके बाद हम और ज़्यादा चैलेंजेस और क्या कुछ किया जा सकता है इसके बारे में बात करेंगे लेकिन उससे पहले मीनाक्षी के पास लेकर चलते हैं आपको जो कि कुछ बनाने की कोशिश कर रही हैं क्या आ, आ, कुछ वो बना रही हैं उसकी एक झलक आप देखिए उसके बाद बाद आपका स्वागत है अब तक आपने देखा फास्ट फैशन को लेकर हमने चर्चा की हमारे खास मेहमानों के साथ अब बात करते हैं कि और क्या कुछ किया जा सकता है इस दिशा में हमारे साथ और जो मेहमान जुड़े हैं उनसे आपका तारुफ कराते हैं श्रुति सिंह हैं कंट्री हेड इंडिया फैशन रेवोल्यूशन शहर मंसूर हैं इन्वायरमेंटल एंटरप्रेनर फाउंडर ऑफ बेर नेसेसिटीज और नैन्सी भसीन है फाउंडर डिस फॉर डे श्रुति सबसे पहले मैं आपके पास यहाँ पर आना चाहूँगा हमने देखा कि क्या ज़रूरी है इस वक्त फास्ट फैशन को टैकल करने के लिए या इसको देखते हुए और आपकी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन जो है वो भी कैंपेन करती है क्लीन सेफ फेयर और ट्रांसपेरेंट अकाउंटेबल फैशन इंडस्ट्री के लिए जो कि बहुत ज़रूरी भी है ऐसे में आपका इंगेजमेंट कैसा रहा इंडियन इंडस्ट्री और कंज्यूमर्स के साथ आई थिंक in india everyone is getting a bit more conscious about just like they are about food that what food are we eating where does this food come from uh, we are getting conscious about fashion which means uh, what is going on in our clothes uh, what are the materials that they are made out of um, does it have plastics in it because 60% of our clothes are actually made out of synthetic fibers and synthetic fibers means it has plastic in it yeah. so what are they made out of um why am i buying clothes you know so uh, do i really need to go and buy a new clothes or just like my uh, co panelist said that uh, can i buy from a thrift store can i swap my clothes so there are a lot of ways that people are getting very aware about the different mediums where they can express their fashion because we love fashion and we want that fashion to be good for the planet and for the people and the third thing is uh, who's making my clothes so are the clothes yeah. made um, by people who are paid well are they living in good living conditions um are they um, you know artisans and are we uh, you know with when we buy clothes or when we are swapping clothes are we promoting and supporting our local artisans our traditions so people are getting conscious about it and uh, they are exercising that choice and we have seen uh, time and again uh, this a movement to be growing and uh, this is no longer a niche uh that you know we can say that there is fashion and then that there, there is a subset of it which is sustainable fashion we have to um, you know this is the future yeah शहर यहाँ पर मैं आपसे पूछना चाहूँगा हमने वेस्ट को लेकर बात की एक बड़े लेवल पर जो है इंडस्ट्री से वेस्ट पैदा होता है जो एक बड़ी चिंता की भी बात है आप जीरो वेस्ट लाइफस्टाइल को फॉलो करते हैं इसके बारे में थोड़ा सा बताइए हमारे दर्शकों Yeah, definitely. I think um, you know we communicate so much of who we are through our clothing, and it's so important to make that decision a mindful and a sustainable choice. 
I mean, just the business of creating fashion creates 1.2 billion tons of greenhouse emissions globally. And, you know, I think over time, if we just look about how fashion used to be and how it is now, just going back to our nani's time, uh, our ajis and tatis, they all knew the name of the local tailor that they were going to, Masood Bhai perhaps, right? They knew how much they were getting paid for it. And the truth is basically over time, as the distance between where our clothes have been produced and where they're being purchased has increased, the transparency is also reduced, right? And also the culture the carbon footprints has quadrupled in many cases. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, if you think about it, we used to have maybe two seasons, summer clothing and uh, winter clothing, perhaps. And now we have about 400 new styles being introduced almost every week in some of the fast fashion brands. And for me personally, a zero waste living brings in the element of trying to have a very solution oriented and, um, you know, action oriented decision towards the way I build my sustainable or low impact closet. And I think, you know, rather than making people feel guilty about their clothing choices, it's an invitation for people to join the movement, right? And I think um, yeah. whether that means through swapping, through repairing, um, buying more ethical, mindful brands, but yeah. also celebrating India because we're so lucky. Each state has yeah. its own form of arts, right? Awesome. Uh, whether that's bandhani, ikat, uh, you know, block print, literally yeah. every state celebrates a form of art through uh, clothing and textiles. Yeah. I like what yeah. you said. Uh, I like what you said about how not making people feel guilty uh, or shame them into making their decisions. So, if Nancy, let me just ask you. We're winding up now. So, uh, how, like, what advice? I'm guessing you. We we want to live, walk the talk, right? What advice would we give to any consumers? How can we make those small changes in our own lives, in our consumption patterns? Yeah, um, I think the first thing that uh, most of us. Uh, have not been doing and can start off with is is actually conducting a wardrobe audit, right? So every six months, assess your wardrobe, look at the things that you haven't worn or used at all, or have used very, very less and not re reached out for in the last six months, and, you know, segregate them in piles. So one could be the swapping or thrifting pile, uh, where you think that things are still in great condition, and they can be reused and reworn and passed on to other people. And just for everyone's information, merely by extending the life of a garment by three months, you end up cutting the carbon footprint by five to 10%, yeah. right? And then there could be one uh, one pile where, where you think that the clothes are not usable at all. And those can be upcycled or recycled in some way. Meenakshi is a great example of, uh, you know, on your show, she, she was just showcasing what can be done through these yeah. things. And then of course, there has to be a pile uh, which, which sparks joy and kind of lets you uh, feel good about uh, the way your wardrobe looks and the way you look. And that sort of becomes uh, the go-to pile that you retain, right? And then very consciously, slowly, as you declutter, the first, the first bit is always decluttering and minimizing. And once you've got yourself down to that point, then start off taking in pieces yeah. very mindfully Right, and, and, and consider what you use more because we had this natural, you know, injunction point with the pandemic, and we all were at home just wearing pajamas and surviving perfectly fine for two years. Absolutely. But Shruti, quickly, last, uh, you know, uh, similarly, what advice would you give, or what tips do you have? Just two, two points. Got it. So I think you can just love your clothes, you know. So when you're buying mindfully, when you're buying conscious clothes, you love your clothes, take care of them really well. Um, I do want to add that it's important to understand also the wash care. So not just where we are buying from or who we are buying from, but also how we are taking care of the clothes. Um, mend them if need be. Visible mending is becoming such yeah. a big movement where people are using embroidery and other techniques yeah. to give the garment a second life. So it's really important to um, understand that those are great mediums to express your fashion. बिल्कुल बहुत अच्छा आप आपने यहाँ पर जो है चीजें समझाई हमारे दर्शकों को बहुत शुक्रिया आपका शुति और सहर और नैंसी हमारे साथ जोड़ने के लिए तो सर आप यहाँ पर चलते चलते जहाँ से हमने शुरुआत की थी वहाँ पर चलते हैं और देखते हैं कि मिनाक्षी जो हमारे स्टूडियो में कुछ बनाने की कोशिश कर रही थी वो कहाँ तक पहुँचे या सो यूजिंग ऑल ऑफ दैट अभी हम लोग ने देर इज दिस नेक पीस आउट ऑफ द टी शर्ट दिस ड्रीम कैचर प्रियंका शो दी एप्रिन सो शी इज वेयरिंग द एप्रिन वी क्रिएटेड आउट ऑफ ड्रेस एंड शी हैज अ फोन चार्जिंग हैंगर ओ वाओ किया दिस इज अ वेरी यूजफुल थिंग वाइल यूर ट्रेवलिंग ऑल्सो देर लॉर्ड ऑफ यू नो प्लग्स आर फायर ऑफ एंड द फोन इज हैंगिंग सो दिस इज समथिंग हैंडी एंड देर इज अ बैग सिंस द प्लास्टिक्स आर बैंड anybody everybody has t-shirts and anybody can make a t-shirt bag it 
doesn't take more than two minutes. You can make them plenty and keep using them and kick the plastic away. That's a great note to end on. Uh, you know, fast fashion has a lot to answer for. Thank you all for joining us uh, on this show to create more awareness, to get our voices and really push for change and say no to fast fashion.